I want you to know that the faith you get from God is not human faith, it's God kind of faith. I think we've said that before in this church. There's a God kind of faith. Jesus said, if you have this kind of faith, you will say to the mountain, be removed and be cast to the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things which you say shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. How many of you know that when God was to create, he said, let there be light? Is that not true? Talk to me. He said what? Did God create light before he created the sun? Or he created the sun before he created light. He created light before he created the sun. You and I today think the sun is the source of light. Is that not true? So God created light before he created what you and I call the source of light. (laughs) Do you know what that means? That means that the supernatural ability of God can create something out of nothing. And when he wanted to get you saved, he gave you that kind of faith. Can I hear an amen? Because the Bible talks about the faith of the Son of God. Jesus Christ in Mark 11, when he was talking, he said, have the faith. You know, they said the literal Greek means have the faith of God. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Say amen. Because God himself spoke and it came to pass. And Jesus was saying, he spoke to the fig tree and he said, by, Peter said he cursed it. He said, no man eat fruit of thee any longer. And then the next day they saw that the fig leaves, the fig tree was wide, withered up. Is that not true? And he said, have faith in God. The literal Greek, I'm told, says have the faith of God. So if you shall say and all of that. What's the difference between human faith and God's kind of faith? Shall I tell you? Human faith is based on what you can see, feel, touch, and taste. God's faith is based on what you cannot see. What you believe. <laughs> That's the basic difference. We use all kinds of examples to explain human faith. There's an element of faith in all humans because we're created in the image and likeness of God. So we all have some degree of human faith. That's why when you and I fly, we don't know who the pilot is, we don't know how to fly a plane, but we believe that wherever they say the plane is going, it will go. Is that not true? That's faith. When you sit on this chair, you do not examine the chair to see if it can take your weight. That's faith. But all of those are human faith. But supernatural faith is when you believe what God says, even when it's not available to your senses in the natural. And that's always the reason why a lot of people fail in their faith endeavors, because we've all been trained to respond to things according to what we see, what we feel, what we touch, what we taste. Is that not true? According to our senses. But the faith of God is not based on that. Can I hear an amen? Amen. The faith of God is based on God's word. And God's word is loaded with his faith. So when you hear God's word, his faith is deposited in you. Think about it. When you are an unbeliever, without any knowledge of God, without anything, you could still receive salvation based not on your faith, but on the faith of God who gave it to you. So God not only gave you salvation, he gave you the faith to receive it. Hallelujah. So when you understand the power of the faith you have, the only way I can advise you is keep using it. Don't give up on it. Even if you don't get all the results that you want, keep using that faith. Because Jesus said, if you have a faith as small as a mustard seed, you will say to the mountain. Is that not true? And say, which of you having servants will say your servant should sit down? Won't you send it on an errand? So he's saying that faith will be your servant, that you should be sending on errands. Say amen. I'm sure you didn't hear that. I said faith to be your servant that you send on errands. Faith, I want you to go and cause there to be this happening. And faith to say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, here I go. <laughs> say amen. Right, so I'm just going to highlight the thing. So warfare, intimacy, then the sense of responsibility. What does that mean? It means that God expects, like what we've done today, we have prayed, and we've prayed for the body of Christ at large. I want you to know that Satan makes it look like anything you do for spiritual purposes, they don't mean anything. It's a lie. They mean a lot. They mean what? A lot. There's still something about our gathering together that Satan doesn't like. Am I talking? Because iron sharpens iron. Okay, what if I was not in this hall today? Will I have picked the insights that I was hearing? No, 
There's, this, there's something about an atmosphere that is created when we gather together. Can I hear an amen? It's called corporate anointing. A lot of results can come out of corporate anointing. But because a lot of people don't put their faith in corporate anointing, they don't understand, so they just, ah, oh, the government said we shouldn't. Thank God the government said we can still gather for worship. Amen. The government said we can gather, so we're not doing anything illegal. So those of you hearing at home, come to church on Sunday. Can I hear an amen? The government didn't say we can't gather. We're not doing anything illegal. The government said worship houses can go on as long as they observe social distancing, covering their faces and all that. So what I'm saying here is this, and what God laid on my heart is that there's still going to be a lot of things that the aftermath of this will still affect many more people. That there will be depression, there will be suicidal tendencies, all kinds of things as a result of all this lockdown, lockdown, will still affect people. So this is not the time to relax. This is not the time to make it look like, you know what, Thank God I don't have COVID. This is the time to be fortified on the inside and constantly do your warfare. Because you see, the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. Satan has already lost the battle. You are enforcing it. And like what we heard today, what is the greatest tool that Satan has? Shall I tell you? Deception. That's the greatest tool he has. And as long as he can deceive us, we are the ones that will empower him against us. Did you hear what I'm saying here? Because as far as heaven is concerned, he has been defeated. Where we are concerned, he has lost it. But if he can deceive us to believe that he hasn't lost it, by our own words, by our own thoughts, by our own attitude, we empower him against us. And that's what the body of Christ is doing ignorantly. Am I talking here? We're not denying his existence, don't get me wrong. We're not denying that it's warfare. And that's why the scripture I have here in Ephesians 6 from verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So when he says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against these ones, it doesn't mean we have to travel to heavenly places because we are already seated in heavenly places. Say amen. So we're not engaging with them as an equal level. We're engaging with them to dislodge them from what they are doing especially in the lives of other people. Because they don't have authority over us. You see my point here? Especially in the lives of other people on, on the earth. Whatever they're doing that, we now say, no, we bind you, we command you, lose your grip, and they have no choice but to obey because we are operating in the name of Jesus. Yes. Can I hear a loud amen? Because a lot of times we don't understand what we have. A lot of us don't know what we have. So we think like normal human beings, ordinary human beings. We think and, and want to relate with life according to what others are doing. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not against others who are ignorant of the Bible. But because God has brought you into a house where the word of God has been taught you, then don't think like an ordinary person again. Can I hear a loud amen? If when the enemy wants to do anything, you can say minus me. Because I'm seated in the heavenly places. Some of those people will hear you say that and they will think it's pride. That's their own problem. But the point I'm making is this. God did not give us all this knowledge just so that we can discuss Bible knowledge. He gave us this knowledge so we can apply these things in our lives. Now COVID has given us the opportunity to apply them. Amen. Say amen. If COVID knocks your door, you should send the word after it. <laughs> If COVID says, I want to come to you, you should send the word after it and tell it by the stripes of Jesus. I am not about to be healed. I am not begging God to heal me. I am the healed of the Lord and you have no authority over me. My body has become the temple of the Holy Ghost and anything that defies the temple, God destroys. So you stand for destruction right now. Go in Jesus' name. Thing has no choice. It has no choice. But if you live like an ordinary human being, say, ah, COVID is happening, but this other person is a Christian, to that other I don't know what they believe. That's the problem. I don't know what they believe. This is an opportunity now to apply what we believe. And that's the way it is with God. 
He doesn't do anything in vain. He shows you his word. He opens your understanding. Once you fellowship with him, he will show you, and then he will tell you how to apply what he has given you. Say loud, amen. amen. It says, verse um, 12 again, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having, your, having guided your ways with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Say amen. So your shield of faith will quench everything. Say loud, amen. What's a fury dart? A fury dart is a dart that when they send it, when it strikes, it ignites. It's a fury dart. So, but your own faith, shield of faith is dampened. <laughs> so when the dart strikes, it quenches his fire. <laughs> That's why it says it quenches. <laughs> Say loud, amen. It's not denying that it will send it, but it will quench it. <laughs> So you have what it takes to win in this life. But you need to believe it, confess it, act on it, and confidently share it with other people. Say amen. Because yeah. sometime will come when people will say, if he can work for you, I believe he can work for me as well. Yeah. And somebody will be inspired to step out. But if all of us just cower in and put our heads under and make it look like we have no choice, you know, we have to. No, 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 no. The world is looking for the solution to their problems. And God has invested the solution in you and I. Let it rise up. Say loud, amen.